Right, this is it. This is the big one. Today is the day that my electrical setup, which is behind me in lots of different boxes, is being installed into my van. And this is probably the biggest day of the whole conversion. It's been a few months coming. Lots of planning, lots of uh, cost has gone into this. So I'm not going to sit here and talk about it. I'm just going to jump straight in. So a lot of people in their conversion, if you're planning a conversion, you might be planning to do this, put their electric setup underneath their bed. I don't want to do that. I'm just not comfortable with sleeping on top of my electrical setup. Um, it's personal preference. So what I'm going to be doing is putting it underneath my kitchen. So what I've done is instead of buying kitchen cabinets, I've bought bathroom cabinets, which are just slightly shorter, um, same widths, same depth. So what that means is that my kitchen cabinets are now short enough that I can rest them on this raised platform, which sits above the wheel arch of the van um, that hides some of the bigger electrics that would just get in the way, mainly the batteries. Because, and I'll get onto this a bit later in depth, but I've bought two 200 amp hour lithium batteries. I've really gone heavy on the batteries. Um, and as a result, they are huge and need their own little space that's not gonna get in the way of sort of everyday life. So let's get building. dark by the time I finished but you can see behind me that it is built so it's very sturdy I'm very happy with it I've got one of the batteries in here to size test it and I'm gonna put the other one in a bit later so what we're gonna be doing next is getting all the wires that I need I've started already from here to everywhere else in the van where they need to be so the ones that I've already done are the lights which run up through this bit of conduit through the wall um, which I ran before I even put the wall in which I think I mentioned in one of my um, earlier videos. The fan, which does the exact same thing, it's just a very slightly thicker cable. And my DC to DC split charger. I've run this big chunky cable, this is 16 millimeters squared, through a hole in the floor and basically routed a hole all the way underneath the floorboard to there, which is where my battery is. I'm very lucky that in a Ford Transit the battery's under here, otherwise I would have spent a lot more money and wasted a lot of cable. So what I'm going to do now is install the lights in the ceiling, which means that I can put a bit more of a finish on the ceiling, um, just sort of cross a few bits off my list, and then I'm going to come back to the electrical setup, also gets the wires out of, out of my way as I'm putting everything in. everything else um, I made myself a little blueprint which basically goes through every every area of my electrics from the batteries to the starter battery my DC to DC charger all the way through to the inverter and what comes off that and then my 12 volt switchboard and pretty much everything else that comes off that as well as my MPPT charger which um, is the charge controller for the solar panels I'll be fitting the solar panels in a separate video but I will be setting them up I'll be fitting the solar panels in a separate video, but I will be um, getting the system set up to receive them today. So the batteries are in, as you see, they're not going anywhere. I've used some bits of bulb battening to make sure of that. Um, the battery setup I've gone for is two lots of 200 amp hour lithium ion batteries. They are big and bulky, um, which is why I've put them low down in the van underneath the kitchen. But the reason I've done this is because um, I didn't want any gas in my van. So I need an electric hob, um, an induction hob. And to have a decent induction hob, you need a three kilowatt inverter. And to have a three kilowatt inverter, you need 400 amp hours of lithium ion. Um, obviously, there are loads of benefits to lithium ion over other battery setups. I won't go a deep dive into those now. I'll bullet point some here, um, but there are lots of other videos on that, and I might do one as well, um, just because it is a, quite a big point. So, yeah, let's get on with it. Yeah, you know. 
So the battery is wired up, um, as in this battery is wired up to this battery. You've got a positive, um, negative still needs to go in because what we're about to do now um, is attach the shunt, which basically measures the battery capacity. So the negative battery terminal goes from here to here, and then this does lots of magic things that I don't really know how it works. And we've got a cable that plugs in here, and will then give me a readout on here. What I'm also going to do while fitting the shunt is fit the ground for the whole system, which is here. And that runs through the um, kitchen base to the back of the van and basically grounds the whole system into the chassis of the van. As per my diagram, that needs to go to between the shunt and the Lynx distributor. So I'm just going to add it to the negative of the shunt. My batteries are wired up to each other and the smart shunts in place um, I'm going to sort of attach the batteries to the setup so this is my Lynx distributor this is the cover for it um, so so my batteries and my inverter are Renogy pretty much everything else in this setup is Victron um, so this is the Lynx distributor you've probably heard about them um, it's gonna go up there so this basically behaves like um, two massive bus bars so you have your positive and negative positive comes in here it's fused over here and then it's attached to um, whatever you want it so coming in or out and then your negatives under there and this also will take the equipment ground from the MPPT charger what I'm about to do next is take the positive off of my batteries have it come up through the back um, I'm going to drill a hole here and here and it's going to come through here into the isolator and then out of the isolator and back out to the back of the van um, which is going to have just mean that my isolator is you know it's really obvious where it is it's going to be safe being able to isolate the whole system really quickly is a priority so I just want that safe and tidy and no wires everywhere so. <laughs> take a bit of a break there and just walk through what I've been doing so as you can see in the back of my electrical cupboard I've now got my DC to DC charger my solar charge controller and my Lynx distributor as well as my big um, Renogy inverter and my isolator which is off because I'm working on the system so what I've been doing is basically attaching these three to this which this is sort of the hub this is the 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 central component of my system. The way that I'm thinking about it is that the electricity comes through these two from their respective sources. So this one comes from the starter battery, which I'll um, wire up in a minute. This one comes from the solar panels, um, and then they come into here, and then the two outputs, this one and this one, which I haven't wired up yet. So this one comes out into this, and then off in the 230 volt, 230 volt um, connections throughout the van. And the one that I'm gonna wire up comes out into a switchboard that again, haven't touched yet. And then through to the 12 volt sections of the van. So this really is the central component. Um, and for that reason, I'm taking my time to just make sure that everything comes in and everything comes out in the way I want it to. Um, you can tell, I'm not touching anything, you can tell that there is electricity coming through because my MTCT is registering that it's interacting with the battery, so that is good. So what I've been doing as you can see from the bottom here that there are some wires running around the back and underneath this cupboard which I will tidy up um, but yeah just making sure that everything is coming in and out of the Lynx distributor properly. So the last step um, on my Lynx distributor as you can see we've got three out of the four of them wired up. Um, this black cable here is the ground for the MPPT charger because that needs a separate equipment ground. So the fourth space is for my 12 port switchboard, um, which is this here. I've got an AUX beam six gang uh, 12 volt switch, which then links to this, which will be on the outside. 
So lights in the living area, lights in the kitchen, lights in the bathroom, and then uh, the water pump, the fridge, and the Max van, which is up there. Um, so that's what I'm going to do next. <laughs> So I have moved about three foot to the right um, of where I've been for the last six or so hours because now I'm going to wire in my DC to DC charger. So what a DC to DC charger is, um, is that the, the alternator in the front of the van in the under the bonnet is creating energy out of the kinetic energy from the engine, turning it into electrical energy and putting it into the batteries, which in my van are under the seat. Um, but it makes too much. And so these batteries are constantly being topped up. So what a DC to DC charger does um, in a much more technical way than I'm about to explain it, is take that excess energy and put it into the electric batteries. So what I've done is, um, this is my electrical cupboard here. That's my DC to DC charger on the right. Um, so there is a wire that runs through this base under the floor. So I put this in, routed this in before I even fitted my floor. Runs under here and comes out here. So what we're going to do is wire it into the battery. Um, I've got two batteries actually, but the wire in parallel so I can treat it like one block um, and also fit this 40 amp fuse um, as close to the battery as possible um, as per my diagram. up um, I'm back over at the cupboard um, and what I'm gonna do now is try and access this bad boy using the app um, so it's just the Victron app it's available on the App Store and you plug this little thing down here um, into the DC to DC charger and it just pops straight up on the app um, and I believe yeah so if you can't see that it's just given me a code um, the default code is six zeros four five six so it's pairing. Oh, so I need to do an update. And this is what we've got um, once it's done its update. So if we come straight onto the screen. It's on charger mode, which is correct, I believe. Um, it's saying that my voltage is 12.2, so I'm happy with that. That graph shouldn't be showing anything. Yeah, it's off. So basically, it's it's disabled due to the fact that my engine's off and you can change that here in settings um, so engine shutdown detection i've got that on because i don't want to be taking power from my start uh, from my vehicle starter batteries when the engine isn't running you can change that but i believe that is the best way to do it because you know you don't want to run your engine flat and not be able to move anywhere because what's the point in having a uh, van if you can't move it around so it has already picked up that I'm using smart lithium batteries, so that's good that it's automatically realised that. Um, and smart as been time, I'm going to turn that on, so that's just a little bit of extra tech that tells you um, basically how long it's going to take to charge going, how you're going. I've also turned on this auto auto readout so I can see. This is my solar, con uh, solar controller, which is this bad boy here. So once that's set up, um, I'll also be able to see all from this screen what's going in, what's coming out. So yeah, that's going to be good. So what I'm going to do now is start her up and see what that does to this little screen. Battery is charging with maximum current and towards... 
there we go so we are bulk charging um, and bulk charging is basically the the situation where as much charge is going into the battery as possible it's usually between 20 percent of capacity and 80 percent of capacity and then um, the other options are absorption which is that final sort of 20 percent and then after that is float which is just keeping the battery topped up so sort of when it when it naturally dips it tops it back up um, but bulk is what we want because my batteries are currently right at the bottom um, so we're just going to put loads of charge into them I'm just going to keep the van running for a little bit probably take it for a drive around the block um, and see where we get to so it's been a couple of days but all the electrics are safely in this cupboard and so I've attached a few of the little accessories that go on the outside. So I've got my Renji Smart Shunt um, monitor, my inverter remote and the Max Air Fan remote. Um, so all that's left to do is my 240 volt socket. Da -da, hello. That's going to go there. And uh, the remote control for the rest of the 12 volt setup that's going to fit here. Um, that's already wired up on the inside, so I just need to drill a hole. I'm going to flush fit it like that. But at the minute, I'm doing the 240 volt. So all I've got is my socket, my two gang back box that will fit on the inside like that and just receive that. I've got a plug and I've got an old extension lead that is knackered. Um, so the plug is missing a prong um, and it's got all the wiring's messed up. Um, so I'm going to reduce, reuse and recycle this and just pair it up with these two bad boys to stop it being thrown out and to stop me having to buy a load of wire. So that's all good. Um, and this is flex wire, so it's perfect for this sort of thing because I have to sort of wrap around itself to go and plug into the inverter. So it's gonna be perfect. <laughs> test I've got a little working light I'm just going to plug it into here so that is wired up and plugged into the inverter so we're all good to test it quickly hey sweet lovely stuff so it's looking good just gonna get it recessed into the side of the cabinet and we'll be all done <laughs> right allow me to take you on a tour of my electrical setups so this is on the face of it my electrical setup which you know obviously we both know there's a lot more going on behind it but it's really really nice to have this sort of clean face to it Obviously there's a big bundle of wires here. They're just the cables from the inverter remote and the battery monitor screen. Um, just so if I wanted to, I could put them anywhere in the van basically. Um, so I am going to wrap those up and stick them on the back here um, just so they're there if I need them. Other than that, it's really clean and tidy. Obviously down here is a little bit more messy, um, but you are able to line up quite easily the positives from the 12 volt switch boards to their respective negatives from this bus bar um, and just sort of trace them back. So it's all good. And what I've also got is a little service hatch. So if I need to get to the shunt or the batteries, it's really easy to just sort of stick my hands on some tools and whatever I need to in there, because um, this is going to be blocked up and painted the same colour as this. So it's good to be able to get to my batteries. And absolute worst case scenario, I can just take this cupboard out because it's fixed to this um, by a few brackets. This is the main sort of control panel, as I'm calling it. Um, this is where the magic happens. So switch, as you can see, we've got some labels on the switchboard. So we've got rear, which is kitchen lights We've got front which is the living room lights slash bedroom and then we've got side which is the lights in the bathroom so that's looking good and then we've got the fridge which as you may have guessed turns the fridge on which is just here and then we've got fan which doesn't actually turn the fan on just obviously sends power to it so I can use the remote to turn it on 
So that's opening itself up and turning on, there we go. So that's got um, an extractor fan function as well as a sort of a regular fan which is on currently, so it says air in on the remote if you can see that. Um, I can turn, I can sort of open and close it, turn the speed up and down and it's also got a thermometer on it as well so I can set the room to be 18 degrees and it will automatically come on um, if it gets above that. So that's the fan. And also on the switchboard, we've got the water pump. So if I turn that on and come around here, um, obviously there will be another version of this over here, which will have the big water tank and it will have the sink on top of it. That's not fitted yet. So I've sort of wired up the water pump very, very rudimentally just using tape. I'm gonna take this apart. Um, this is just for the purposes of this tour. Um, and then I will refit the water pump once the, um, the rest of the system is in, but I just wanted to make sure it works. But yeah, the pump's running really well. Um, it's running consistently. It's rated at 70 watts at 12 volts, which is quite high, but I'm obviously only gonna be using it for short bursts. So um, I've rated my fuses accordingly in the electrical setup. So over here, um, so it's all good. The fridge is 60 watts. So again, I've rated the fuses accordingly. Um, that will be running at all times, but it's got a really good um, sort of eco mode where it will um, only use what it needs to use. So I'm not worried about that. So I've currently got everything on. Um, I've got the, the fan running, the water pump is going on, it's uh, just recirculating in the same um, bowl of water. I've got the fridge on and I've got all the lights on um, and nothing bad has happened. It's obviously using a lot. My battery monitor is telling me that um, I've got three hours left, but I have only got 8% battery because I've try, you know, tried to charge the batteries up from zero um, and haven't done that fully yet. So I'm going to turn that off because I don't want to be draining my batteries when they're so low, but it's it's a good sign that everything's working at the same time. I'm very rarely going to have it work at the same time. Obviously, I have got my 240 volt stuff hooked up as well. Um, so there, there, there could be potentially scenarios where I've got everything going on now, as well as um, you know an induction hob. So I will really be testing my system, but I'm confident that it's going to be all right, which is a really good feeling. So I think that's the end of the video. I think it's probably the longest I've ever done, um, but it is arguably the most important and one of the things that I've spent the most time sort of planning and, and looking forward to. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Um, thank you very much if you've already subscribed and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.